Now I've got to give this aquarium a service. So the first thing I've started to do is test the levels. The salinity is 0.025, so that's a good level for running the aquarium. It's a bad level if you want to run new fish, but for an established tank, that's a good level. I've then gone and started testing the water. The ammonia is basically zero. There is a little bit of nitrite in the water, which it's just a tiny level, but it's a, a little bit of a concern. Um, and there's basically no nitrate and there's basically no phosphate. So it's really important that we don't run phosphate and nitrate removing products when there's not nitrate and phosphate. And at the moment, there's only some nopox, which is on one mil a day. So that's basically nothing. So I'm happy enough with that, but we can't have that run at a high level when there's no nitrate for it to break down. And when the skimmer's not doing much, it's really, really important that we don't run that too much nitrate removing product, which in this case has not been a problem. So now I'm gonna give the tank a clean and give the skimmer a clean and give the filter sock a clean. I'll check what all the um, levels are on. And oh, we've also got, looks like a little pouch of stuff there that um, could be something like um, super concentrate or some sort of bacteria. But at this stage, the fish look fairly good. Uh, I don't know how the dinosaur died, but anyway. Fish look okay, corals look a bit average. So we'll just keep testing and plug away from there. So this tank's been largely unattended due to being away. Now, the water test results that we're getting at the moment is your is the pH is a bit on the acid side. We really want the pH for the corals to be 8.4. It's really okay for the fish, this pH, but the fish are okay, and the fish look okay, but it's definitely too acidic for the corals. So if the water was to stay like this, which obviously it won't, then that would be a major problem to the corals. The other thing is that the KH of this water was about three. So I'm going to do a water change now and I'm going to raise it. And the pH is a little bit acidic and the calcium of this water right now is at about 320. So the calcium is a little bit on the low side. The pH is on the low side KH is a little bit on the low side. So it does have a dosing pump. So what I'll do now is go and check that there's actually product in the dosing pump. So let's pump. see what we've got going on there. We've got one that's going to the nopox, which is for the nitrate, and that's only set on one, so that's okay. Then we've got one here that's going to the magnesium. Then we've got one here that is going to the, oh, that's KH as well, and there's KH in that. So we can check the setting of number two. So I'll just have a quick check on this. Program, we go to pump two. Yep. And that's set for one mil. So I'm obviously gonna have to increase that. I'll make that three mils for now. And I'll just check what the other dosing pumps are set at. So let's have a look at this. So number one is going to KH. Hang on, let's just check that. So that one there is going to there, which is calcium. There's not much in there, so I'll top up the calcium. And the calcium is set at one mil. So I'll change that to three mil because the calcium was a bit low. Then two is the KH. That's now set on three mil, it was only one mil. The magnesium is set on one mil, which I'll just leave for now. And then number four is the nopox, which was set on one mil. So that should really be okay now. So the water comes out of the tank. I've given the filter socket clean. 
Um, I've given the protein skimmer a clean. It's got a real marine pure block there, so I'm happy to see that. I've given the inlet of the pump a bit of a clean. I've checked on the um, settings for the dosing pump and altered it. I've manually added some supplement to compensate for the levels. Now it's time to give the, the glass a bit of a clean, like so. Now the key to cleaning algae is really to do it regularly. Because if you clean the algae regularly, you'll find it comes off very easily. It's not a big deal. If you leave it, the longer you leave the algae until you clean it, the more stubborn the algae gets, and the harder the algae is to get off, and therefore the harder the tank is to clean. So that's why the key to a tank is small amounts regularly. It's really so much easier than trying to do those big irregular services. Now it's good to clean the algae off the glass before you go doing the water change because you want to pull some of the crap out of the gravel while you're doing a water change. And this gravel is actually quite dirty, which um, may explain why there's a little bit of nitride in the water. Because while he's been away, it's possible a little bit too much food's been going in, resulting in quite dirty gravel. Now with your aquarium, it's really important you don't keep your cleaning products for your fish tank with the cleaning products for your house. Because any residual cleaning products that are on your cleaning tools can be detrimental to your fish. So you want to keep them completely separate and away from any nasty chemicals. Easy mistake, big consequences. And I've seen that happen. And be careful what sponges you use for your fish tank too. You can't use any sponges with embedded chemicals or that have been used with chemicals. Now, as with all aquariums, you really find that some corals are very easy to look after and others are far more challenging. And this really comes into play during times like when you're away. Like, for example, the owner here has been away. Um, these I find are very easy, very easy, not as 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 easy, normally easy, not so easy, 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 and not so easy. So that so you can often see a reflection of which corals are doing well over a period of time, particularly in your absence. Now the fish are not looking fat. So physically looking at the fish, they do not look like they've been overfed. But in saying that, I just did a gravel clean and the gravel clean came out quite dirty. So the I'd really recommend feeding foods like New Life Spectrum's probiotics because I find that's just a much physically cleaner food. So there was quite a lot of shit that I got out of the sand when I was doing the gravel clean. Definitely more than I would wish. And foods like probiotics help because the probiotic bacteria in the food is not only good for the fish's digestion, but when the fish poo, the bacteria in the poo eats the poo. So it's really a great way of keeping um, the tank physically clean. Um, there is a cleaner shrimp in there, which is one of the best things you'll ever buy for reducing your pathogen count. Now, the other thing is that um, I've just turned off the nitrate remover, the Nopox. I've turned it off on the dosing pump. And the reason why I've turned it off is that I've tested basically no phosphate or nitrate in this water. And because the owner's been away, I'm assuming the corals are not actually being fed. So... Um, the nitrate and phosphate had a capacity to be exported, possibly through whatever that little bag is there, and definitely from the um, addition of organic carbon. And so the corals have probably not been fed much. So it is important to actually feed your corals, particularly with um, things like goniopores and potentially this guy that's receding. So maybe he hasn't got enough actual food in the last couple of weeks. So spot feeding your corals, something like reef roids or um, reef revolutions, polyp feast, um, uh, actual food to feed would be an advisable option. Now, um, the other thing is 
the scape. So for the way this tank's set up, this is a very, very acceptable scape. It's quite easy to clean in and around the scape. But as you progress with the tank, you'll find this scape quite limiting because you've got very good lights on this tank. And then if you actually look at the scape, it's basically through the center of the tank. So if you wanted the layer of coral and you wanted a lot more coral, what I'd actually be wanting to do is to, to actually sort of stagger it off the back wall like this and you create like a shelf so everyone's going to get the light. Whereas for the amount of corals that's in this tank, the way it's scaped is actually quite good. But as you want more and more corals, then basically your prime real estate's the top here. Um, and then you're going to have a lot of trouble staggering the corals. So for future, you could consider rescaping it. And instead of having one ridge going through the center, which for the current situation is, is really quite functional. But for if you want to like really coral it out, then if you're able to create more photosynthetic surface area, that way everyone gets a chance to get the light as opposed to just the ones across the top of that ridge. So that's just a little something to bear in mind. But all in all, very nice little setup. These Aqua One mini reef tanks are very good value and he's gone and put some awesome lights on it. So this is really quite a good little setup going on here and particularly considering the owner's been away. So therefore the tank has lacked a bit of attention. Um, it's, it really is in quite good stead. So over a period of time, the water quality has deteriorated, but that'll be quite easy to um, fix with just a little bit of attention. So I'd be wanting to do another water change ASAP. I just did a water change now. I wanna do another one, preferably even in the next couple of days. I'd wanna make sure the skimmer's getting cleaned out every couple of days. I would want to improve the quality of the food. So I'd be going for some Denichi color and I would be going for New Life Spectrum's probiotics and supplement that with a little bit of frozen as a little bit of a treat. That's probably how I'd roll with that. And then um, just keep your water test going and then just slowly fine tune those levels until they're good again. Because the, over the last couple of weeks, calcium has deteriorated. The pH has gone down, the KH has gone down, all to levels that will be an issue. The other thing is because he's been away, it's possible that door has been shut. So therefore um, the oxygen may actually be depleted in here if the room's been shut up and um, their normal amount of airflow has not existed. So the other thing just to be conscious of in winter, summer, sorry, is that if, um, depending on how hot this room got, a chiller is something that may need to be contemplated for the future. But basically this tank has very good lights. It has very satisfactory water flow. It has a very functional scape. It has very good biological media. You could definitely consider a better skimmer in the future. It's got a very good dosing pump. It has all the hallmarks of a highly functional, awesome aquarium. And um, I just slowly populate it up, particularly with some more very easy to keep corals. And um, this is really quite a beautiful little setup. And just watch that tang. Watch he doesn't eventually grow out of the tank and produce too much waste. But we do not want to run zero nitrate and phosphate as currently is. Got a strom shell. He's good for running around, keeping the sand clean. Could do with a blenny. Very nice little tank. So the fish have been getting some New Life Spectrum. This is a very good food, but if I was buying this, I'd be going for the probiotic version of this food. And then this is very important. This has been kept in the fridge, which is actually quite a good idea. It does tend to last better in the fridge. But um, this sort of food is very important to go into the tank. 
particularly if you are experiencing zero nitrate and phosphate, because the corals do need to eat, particularly with lights this good. So um, I would normally dose something like this a couple of times a week, particularly if my nitrate and phosphate is low. If I've got an elevated nitrate and phosphate, I would probably reduce my feeding of this maybe once a week and smaller amounts. But it is important that your corals are fed on a regular basis, otherwise they just don't get the actual nutrients, particularly when you've got effective nutrient export, such as um, carbon dosing. So it all is a little bit of a balance. And just remember that some corals are not very forgiving and then other corals are very forgiving. So when you're purchasing your corals, you really want to be aware, is it a one, two or a three? Number one, coral is very easy to keep. And number three, absolutely not. So I've just put in a larger dose of coral food and then that food should descend on the corals and give them a little bit of a feed. And once again, because the nitrate and phosphate is very low in here at present, um, larger doses of, of um, food is highly advisable. But then if you do get yourself in a situation where your nitrate and phosphate is higher, then lower doses of your coral foods would also be advisable. So there's a little bit of compensation that's required. The other thing that concerns me slightly is I, I'm not seeing a heap of coralline algae. So um, over time, once we've stabilised our pH, KH calcium, then hopefully we'll start seeing a bit more good coralline algae. Because um, right now the KH calcium and pH are all too low and that is going to stop the growth of the coralline algae. So keeping an eye on those levels right now is going to be absolutely crucial. Now when you're improving or playing around with an aquarium, sometimes it's the things that you don't know that you don't know that make the difference. So what you can do is send away a ICP test to companies like Triton, and that can give you a whole big breakup of all these other levels that you can take into consideration particularly minor and trace elements. So these are not game changers, but they're things that if tweaked can really make a big difference to your aquarium. So sending that away to cans where it gets tested, then you'll get a, a, um, a printout that will tell you all of the sort of 36 or whatever it is levels that they test. And then that gets you to look at the trace elements that you're using and then potentially increase or decrease the combinations of whatever you're using to make sure that the um, traces are all accurate within the aquarium. And this little attention to detail can really be the difference between the tank really popping and the tank just being okay. So even if it be every sort of few months, even a couple of times a year, it's really worth just sending away a Triton test and just getting a little snapshot of um, what's going on in the tank to a much finer degree.